Hi. You don't know me. We've never spoken before. Unless we have. Then we've... Unless, um, here's the thing. I, I, I never really wanted to talk on YouTube. Not really a, 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 Not really comfortable with this. I'm not really sure how people are comfortable with this. Make you a sociopath? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Either way, I'm afraid I have to do this old Tony style. Sorry, old Tony. Uh, you're always going to do this better than me, and your hands are way prettier than mine. But So, here's the thing. I've got this little channel. I do this stuff. Make the woods. I'm a guy on the internet. No, not that guy. I'm a different guy. Different guy on the internet. Not that guy. Not that guy either. Okay. So look, the thing is, is I came across the most obscene tool hoard that a uh, two-bit you know, tool jockey could ever dream of coming across. It's truly mind-boggling. I don't mean to brag, but this 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 whole thing this is this is it's. It's a bra I'm, I'm bragging. This whole this whole video is I'm bragging about it in this video. Maybe two videos. I don't know. I'm not I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to edit this yet. So we'll just have to see. Whatever you end up with, I guess it's going to be clear. My my thought is that I'll I'll chapter it out and I'll sort of put a chapter for each section. The prop the problem that I'm having is that I did an inventory of this earlier today. There's something like 98 categories, probably more than 400 tools. Um, I'm not going to give you a table of contents with 98 categories. I, I want viewers. I don't want to alienate you any more than my voice already is. So I think what we're going to do is we're just going to move forward. I'm going to start... I don't know. I don't know what's most popular. I think I'm just gonna start. I'm gonna start with sharp things. There you have it. Sure, we'll start. We'll start. We'll start there. We'll start there. We'll go there. Let's let's go there now. Before we start on the saws, I I need to get something really clear here. I don't have, I'm not a, uh, a camera person, and I don't have a microphone for my camera, mainly because I honestly never intended to talk to the internet. Um, so I'm going to, I have a big voice. I'm going to try to talk loud. I hope that it comes through. If this sounds like, like, um, you know, if it sounds bad. You know why? I don't. I don't have a microphone. All right. <clears throat> so here's the thing. Right here, we have one, two, three, four saws. Um, these are not all of the saws that I'm going to show you, but we're going to start with these. Um, just sort of as a as a clarification, you know absolutely nothing about me, but I'm going to tell you that I do not typically use Western saws like this. This is not a thing that I'm really into. Uh, my experience with Western saws is, you know, that um, the, 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 the piece of crap that came from Ace Hardware that lived in my dad's garage that we always tried to cut MDF with and things just always just went poorly. And it's the sort of thing that sort of sounds better than it actually works. So, you know, I, I, I'm i just going to assume here that the real deal is better. But I have no experience with saws like this because I've never been fortunate enough to come across a single one, much less the number that I'm going to show you. This is a distance saw. This is a distance saw. Um... This is actually engraved A H D Y E A H D I. Uh, Distant and Sons, Philadelphia. It's it's great. It's 
a beautiful saw. These are uh, uh, rip saws, apparently. Again, not an expert on these kinds of saws. Um, I typically, you know, I, you know, I like I, I like a good Japanese pull saw. I'm a lazy American, so that's that's what I go for, the easiest. So here, uh, another. This is a, a Diston cross cut. Um, I don't know if you can see that that mark is still there. Now the thing about a lot of the tools in this hoard. Oh, let's see. Hang on. Let me let me see if I can read this out loud for you. Made expressly for L.H. Kurtz Company, Des Moines, Iowa. Our blade with perf uh, with perfection handles, adapted for a variety and easy cutting. Silver steel, etc. Um, yeah, so this this is actually isn't uh, one of the distance. This is the this is the odd man out. This fella, uh, it's an E.C. Atkins company, which is a it's a brand I'm actually not entirely familiar with, but I'm going to familiarize myself with them. <laughs> Again, not a Western handsaw kind of guy. This is this is an absolutely gorgeous saw though. I I don't know if you can really get a sense for. All of these saws are straight, straight, straight. There's not a kink in them. The teeth are kicked out on these a little bit. This is the Diston crosscut. And again, this one is engraved. Uh, established 1820 or 1840. Uh, Diston and Sons. And let's see, there's a quote here. For beauty, finish, uh, and wildly, this, uh, it's hard to make out, guys, I'm sorry. Somebody else probably already knows. You can put it in the, in the comments. Um, take that little fill off of there. These are beautiful saws. There's a stiffness to saws like this that I wasn't expecting. Um, you know, and I honestly, I don't know. I'm not really sure, like, what makes an orchestral saw. Like, what, what is it? What does it need in order to be uh, accepted into the the sort of the realm of music and you know get some bow saw effects? I have no idea. But but this is nice. I would be really upset if. Um, if if uh, if somebody from Pinterest did awful things to these, See, this is another one of the odd ones out. This, uh, there's no marking on it. And as far as I can tell, uh, this is a handmade saw. It just has that feel about it. Um, again, I, I wish that I could tell you that I was an expert on Western saws. And I, and I know, I'm going to... I'm I'm going to ask this probably throughout the video that uh, the the people that I know are in the, uh, the the tool community and the woodworking community that know everything about these saws. You are absolutely free to describe away in the comments uh, everything that I am absolutely failing to mention about these, including tooth counts and etc. All I can tell you is that this is. An incredibly well-made saw. <laughs> this is this just does not feel like anything that you would come across in the 21st century. I'm not going to measure. Anyway, you get the point. It's beautiful. This is this is beautiful. 
So this is an, an unmarked uh, keyhole saw. It's uh, again, it's well made. I, I don't know if this is early 20th century or mid 20th century. Um, I really can't tell you. However, we can compare it to this, which is marked and is absolutely beautiful. Uh, you can see this handle. This the grip on this is just incredible. My hand's a little big. But it is labeled uh, on this side. It's nicely marked. B. Gregory. B. Gregory. Uh, w. B. Gregory. Albany. And it says it's stamped cast steel. And this is a very, very rigid little guy. Let's see if we can get you. It's gonna do it. I'm not. I'm not a. I'm not a cinematographer, guys. I'm really sorry. I wish I was. Maybe I'll learn. I'll learn. I promise. I'll learn. I don't know. Okay. This guy, another <clears throat> unmarked. Uh, I'm fairly certain this is 19th century. Small enough to be used as a dovetail saw. I'm gonna guess that it probably was. This has a slight kink in it right here, which is unfortunate. I don't know if you can see that there, but it's still gorgeous. It has a wonderful patina on it. Which I'm happy to remove if I need to. <laughs> it's a joke. Um, and then this, I think this was in the collection that this is just a sort of a 20th century dovetail quote quote dovetail saw. This thing is beyond dull. So not the prettiest thing in there, but still nice. So while we're talking about saws, there's probably a couple other things we need to talk about from this hoard. Uh, this is a handsaw vise. Um, I have never seen one of these before. Uh, I would assume that it sets up on your bench like that, uh, maybe clamps down, and then you've got room. Uh, it'll somehow open and pinch your saw so that you can come in and file away. Um, that is likely also used with this, which is a tooth adjuster. Uh, or, uh, yeah, there's a name for this. I don't my brother told me that it was a, a tooth adjuster. He's much more knowledgeable about this stuff. This is a Dunlap tooth adjuster somehow. I feel like there may be a part of this that's missing. Maybe not. I can actually, actually, you know what? I'm just not very bright. Look at that. You see that? Moving in there again. God. Did I, did I tell you guys that I bought this camera? I bought it from a used camera store. For 110 bucks, it's pretty great. It's a uh, Panasonic DMC GF2, 10 years old. It's pretty great stuff. All right, so go easy on me. Uh, hold on. All right, so again, tell me I'm wrong in the comments, but um, I'm fairly certain that this is a sawtooth file. It reads, uh, what does that read? Uh, it's Kearney, made in the USA. There you have it. Oh, 
man. All right, so I'm already starting to second guess myself here. <laughs> I forget how salty the internet is. So you go, you go posting pictures of hordes like this on tool forums, on places that start with the letter R, and people are like, "Hey, man, like it's not cool. You're pushing down all the other posts, man. Why don't you just post all the tools at once, man?" It's like, I. I think this video will be pretty good evidence about why I couldn't just post all the tools at once. But whatever, whatever. The internet's hard. It's hard. It's a hard place to be on the internet. Anyway, so wrenches and screwdrivers. Th this is not as cool as what's to come. I, you know, maybe you've already skipped ahead. Maybe it's in the thumbnail, but you know what's coming. You know, you know what's coming. But this is still cool. So check this out. So yeah, you know, there's, we all trip over these constantly in antique stores, whatever. Somebody's got some pipe wrenches. Yeah. There's an 1879 wrench. It's mission. It's a little dually. You know, this is not marked or anything. Uh, I have a feeling just the way it sits in my hand that this was machine shop made. This may have been one of those that was done for a uh, um, job interview. Uh, I'm pretty sure they used to do that. I think that I think I heard Hand Tool Rescue mention that one time. So anyway, there you go. 1879 wrench. These guys are great. I I've run across wrenches like this in the past, and uh, I always enjoy finding them. The ones that I've seen previously are European. I don't know about these. Um, some of these, I think, are marked. Maybe not. Uh, this one was marked. This is a funky one. I'll have to get some steel wool out on this fella. This, this, this also... Man, that just feels... Feels interesting. I don't know, machine people, maybe you can tell me why that is round and not beveled like, or maybe that's round too, maybe it's just old. Anyway, you guys know, here. Um, this guy's cool, he has a bend this way, this is definitely shop made, uh, and a bend this way. Somebody made this in their shop. This this wasn't mass produced. <sighs> HE911. This is a multi tool. This is a multi wrench. It's a, it's a multi, uh, yeah. Multi, 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 multi pass. There you go. What, I don't know. It's a thing. There it is. Very cool. Feels like this should open. A very secret door in Hogwarts, or I don't know. Uh, parallel pliers, broken. A broken pair of parallel pliers, but still. This is the first set of parallel pliers that I've ever found in the wild. There's a lot of, there's a lot of that here in this horde, though. This guy is interesting. He's got a nubbins right there. Which I'm not certain what that's for. He also, he has a bend that way and that way. And I really, it doesn't feel like a mistake. That feels like it's designed that way. Again, not a machinist. Don't know much about those. Also have no clue what this is. This is great. Um, this seems really special. So this one, I'll see if I can get some other good photos of it. I put some online, but I deleted those posts. So, um, yeah, this again feels handmade. Um, it's an old hex wrench and then a square. And I imagine 
that space could be used too, but I'm not 100% sure for what. And then that fella, he's really cute. He's a tiny little dude. <clears throat> Perfect handle screwdriver. And then these fellas, these are nice. Just old screwdrivers. We've all, we've all seen these. But now this guy, look at that big old fella. That's a big fella. That's a big fella. Just uh, before we move on from wrenches, I forgot this fella here. I have a feeling, a gut feeling, that this is a tool specific tool. Um, it looks like it's got a wing nut adjuster on it here. I'm fairly certain that this goes to a tool in the collection, but I'm not sure which one. And, you know, I, I want to be clear about this going forward, and especially in the next couple of sections. There are going to be a lot of items here that I cannot personally identify. Uh, my brain just it has too much cheese in it to to really retain that much knowledge. Uh, so I'm re I'm really relying on some of you known actors out there to come forward and tell me what the hell some of this stuff is. Um, all right. So anyway, very cool, adorable tiny wrench. All right, bits. I was going to do bits and braces at the same time. Um, clearly, I need a little bit more room. <clears throat> so what's cool here, and you you may have a better chance of identifying the use for some of these bits based on the on the braces that I'll pull out in a little while, but you can kind of just looking at it, you can kind of get a feel that there are two very distinct types of bits here and I, I I'm guessing but I think it's true that um, you know one is a more modern uh, interpretation of a bit and one is not these clearly look like fairly modern bits you know bits within the last 100 112 years 100, uh, 121 years now sorry um, here are really intriguing things. If the light is not too terrible, you can see that that is a gouge. It has the same sort of ass chuck thing. <laughs> yeah, God help me, I'll edit that out. All right. And also, there are a number like this that you can see that they were a gouge, but we're missing a bit. And I don't know if that's a relic of user error or if that's how it was designed. Let's get some contrast in here. here. There we are. There are three or four like this. This is straight now where it is missing. So it could be that whoever owned these in the past broke them, straightened that bit out. So it was still useful. We have another one here, same thing, same spot. All of these are pretty great. There are several different kinds of countersinks, I guess. Ribbed for the wood's pleasure and one smooth. There are three or four of these as well. 
Very interesting tools like this. Not certain what that would be used for. Um, you can see that the prongs go in either direction. See that? One shoots out to the left and one to the right. The uh, There are a number I feel like machinists would really appreciate this. This this really feels like a handmade bit for a very specific purpose. It's a very odd angle on the top there, matched with an odd angle on the other side. Again, I don't know anything about this. I don't know what this was used for. I've never seen anything like this. Bits like this, we've seen millions of them. And not like this. The quality of the machining on this one in particular is really stunning. It's beautiful. Something I want to be sure to point out over here. Now, I said I was familiar with modern bits, but I have actually never seen one quite like this, and I think we can all guess what this is what this is for. But what's really interesting about this, there's actually two of these in the collection. There's this one here as well. In uh, the group of this, there is an extendable, adjustable addition. You can take the short one out, have a wider diameter hole here, We've got a sharp bit there and a sharp bit here. Now, how one would actually go about sharpening that, I don't know. My sharpening skills are definitely lacking that kind of complexity. But this is a really interesting little guy. I've never seen anything like it. Some of you guys, you've probably seen a million of these. And you're just laughing at yourselves going, oh, I can't believe he doesn't know what that is. But I'm, you know, I'm pleading ignorance on it. It's beautiful. It's a very, very elegant little piece of tooling. And while we've got a pile of steel on the table, I figured I'd show you these as well. Oh, here's a bit. This is another one of those machined bits. This is, or, or handmade bits. Let's see if I can get you to focus here. Again, very primitive tooling, it seems. I don't know what the age on something like this is, but I, I'm, I'm going to wager that this is probably at least 100 years old, 100 and, what is it, at least 120 years old now. I keep forgetting how far into the 21st century we are. something it's striking almost ended this section without showing you this as well you have to understand that this the horde that I'm introducing you to it was something that just it just kept going and going uh, this is an Irwin set this is beautiful um, that fellow's in there too that's a flathead I love that the booklet is still here. How to select and use and care for bits. Very nice. Oh, this feels very Eisenhower. Ooh. How to select, use, and care for bits. Reason for booklet. If you will notice, the bits that you see in workshops, tool chests, and on home or farm toolkits, you will discover that more information about bits would be very useful. Hmm. And here we are. If you look on the back, copyright 1951, Irwin Auger Bit Company, Wilmington, Ohio. 
You will Hyans, goodness gracious. I probably just butchered your accent, I'm sorry. You'll uh you'll forgive me, you're Ohioans, right? You're nice to everybody, you just vote weird. Alright. Uh braces, right? However you want to address them. The uh this is a really interesting assortment here, and I, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get to this big guy in a minute. But these four here, to me, they represent uh, a few things. I mean, there, there's evolution, right? Uh, but then there's also just sort of general quality and make. Now, I, I'll be honest with you, I have not spent a lot of time uh, going over these with a fine tooth comb and figuring out the makers and uh, the timeline here. Uh, but what I noticed up front, the, the things that were immediately apparent to me uh, were what they were made out of, uh, what the chucks looked like, and uh, the assembly of this bit here. And I just want to turn this over and show you. You can see on the bottom of this one, and this is probably pretty common, um, you've got a, a big metal flange here that connects to this piece of wood out of all of them I think that this one in particular may have been the the fanciest uh, it appears to have actual rosewood uh, handling so this this is rosewood here some sort of old mahogany uh, same here as well plus you have that extra bit of steel here there's a a great chuck on this thing everything needs to be oiled but this is a in 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 general working order there's nothing wrong with this chuck I could pick this up and I could use it now uh, made in USA that's about all I can glean from it without really taking off all the uh, the stuff which will come eventually but this uh this appears to be ratcheted um which some of you are going to tell me uh just how little i know here but i'm i've i'm shocked that tooling this old that there's any of it that's ratcheted so that's uh that's interesting and maybe i'm maybe i just don't know what i'm talking about but anyway I should actually stop playing with it and put it in focus here. Uh, this guy, a little bit different. He's a little bit lighter. Same general size, but lighter. No steel on the handle here. There's a, looks like there's a couple of, quote, brads that are shoved in there to keep it on. Uh, showing its age on top. I'm guessing that you know that this is a maple or a beech or something uh, again though I think that this is a US made there is a manufacturer number on here 80880 I don't see a manufacturer name this one's this one's a bit dirtier um, the, the chuck on that fella definitely needs a little bit of work he's He's seen better days. Again, this guy very similar to the last one. Also, I think that chuck needs just a little bit of work. It's uh, I should stop holding it out of the... You should see it. I should hold it in front of the camera where you can see it. Yeah, anyway, that guy's not in great shape. This is the newest looking out of the bunch. Still has its chrome about it. Uh, Chuck works great. And again, got that extra metal flange there. It's really nice. Hey, you know, I'm not a... I like my drill press. I like my hand drill. I'll be honest with you. I, I, I've got a bit brace. I've had one in my shop for a while. Uh, I use it for drilling tricky things. Uh, or augering or whatever the right terminology is. I do it for tricky things, but 
it pretty much stays in my toolbox. It's an oddity. These are really nice examples. Uh, at least this one, this one here, and this one here up top. Now, this is where we're really going to need uh, some of that big brain internet juice power that uh, that you guys are always flexing. Um, this is this is a mystery to me. Uh, it could be that this is just a just an apple peeler, <laughs> but I don't think so. I don't mean to disappoint Eric, but um, we've definitely got a chuck here, and this chuck. This chuck, it appears to handle a standard auger bed, just like that. I've got those giant auger bits that were on the table earlier, but they don't, they've got a different chuck coupling there. But this is, this is that tapered square, and it goes right in there. Now, as far as I can tell, there's no place to fasten this to the bench. I also don't think there's anything missing from this. I think that this is a complete piece. But I don't see any way to actually fasten it to the bench. So when I first pulled it out of that giant toolbox, I was on the very bottom and I just assumed, my first thought was, oh, holy cow, it's a, it's a thing. <laughs> I thought maybe it stood up like this, but that doesn't really make much sense. So somebody, uh, one, of the, one of the big brained individuals online indicated that it very possibly could have been an early metal auger um, and that this is just the com this is an absurd bit to put in there and it was never meant to be used on wood I don't know um, I'm gonna restore this because you can you can actually see underneath this this uh, nice little dirt patina there's a there's an old red color under there and uh, I'm at least gonna clean it up enough to see what that looks like but this is a really elegant little piece it's got this is nice they didn't have to do this I mean, this works both as decoration and engineering sure but they didn't need to do that it's nice it's too it's it's nice it's nice of them thank you for doing that for thank you that's nice of them big square nuts another big square nut here let's see yep big square nuts I'm not all blessed with big square nuts. But this is the best thing about this. This is what's really interesting. Come around the back. Look at that. You see that? You looking at that? You see that? You see it? Look at that. You see that? Look at that. Well, I'll be doggone it. That appears to be ratcheted as well. Or something. Maybe ratcheted is the wrong word. I don't know. Why don't you look at that? Huh. Anyway, that's pretty great. Beautiful. I gotta, I gotta say, light is some really, some really deceptive stuff. <laughs> I, again, I'm not a filmmaker. I don't know anything about cinematography. I, I understand that, that, that light make picture work. That's what I know. Light make picture work. Up there, that way, I have a giant LED that is, it's, it's, it's as bright as the sun. It may be brighter. It hurts to look at. And I'm not two feet away over here. And of course, you know, maybe I'm just an idiot. I don't understand how shadow works, but you would think that this would just be as bright as the surface of the sun, but no. Um, anyway. It doesn't matter. Marking tools. This one I'm really excited about. I think that, uh, yeah, well, I'd, I'll tell you for sure, I have a buddy of mine. Uh, he has seen some of the amazing slicks that are to come. He actually told me, he says, you know, the, the, the thing that makes him more emotionally erect is... Uh, with measuring tools, it's not slicks. 
He likes slicks. I like slicks. He gets he, his anyway. Whatever. Okay. So right here, we'll start here. Slide rules. Now I am uh, admittedly uh, mathematically inept. Uh, yes, I'm a woodworker. Yes, I'm a moderately competent woodworker. Maybe, maybe more than moderately, moderately competent. The good thing for me, the lucky thing, is that I married a mathematician. I advise anyone that is mathematically inept to marry a mathematician. Um, I am told that with these slide rules, you can know all kinds of math. Uh, that they're extremely helpful. I have never personally used one. I don't know how to use them. I'm going to start with this one up front here, though. Now, these rules came in these cases. This is a handmade leather case. Uh, one of the, the previous owners of this collection uh, must have made this case. Um, it's listed, and I'm going to read this to you. I don't know that you can see everything here, but there, there's a lot going on in this case. This is listed as F.G. Johnson. And on the side, there's some lettering, let's see. Uh, F.G. Johnson, there's pencil marks. Can't read the rest, and I, I don't know if you can make this out. And the light just is not gonna work with me here, but somebody has drawn, and it's barely visible here, they have drawn a grumpy little woodworker face right there. And it, it just shows you that being a grumpy woodworker transcends both space and time. Now, this was the rule that was inside. Uh, my buddy, he gleefully exclaimed when I, uh, when I was telling him about these rules, he said, um, what did he say? He said it's a uh, K plus E. K, it's a, it's a K, oh shoot. K plus E, slide rule, have no idea what that is. I'm assuming it means um, crackers and eggs. Who knows? Either way, it's very cool, it's very nice. There's a little crack on the glass here. This is, uh, is loose, um, I'm not really sure how important that is. It does slide, it is a rule, so that's nice. This one in particular, I'm I'm really fond of this one. Now, my dear sweet wife, who is one of the most amazing human beings on this planet, uh, she was very excited to see this one, and I picked it up and I handed it to her, and the poor thing dropped it and broke the viewfinder, which I'm I'm not even a little bit worried about. Uh, I have the pieces. I can cut glass, uh, I can scribe a line, I think, I think I can fix this, no problem. But she feels really bad about it, and, and, and I don't think there's any need to. So this is great. Uh, so, oh, K and E, ah, I'm an idiot, there you go. Kufel and Esser, Company, New York. I should have looked closer, there we are. Patented June 5th, 1900. So, at least 120 years old. Now, I'm going to show you, again, you're going to really miss out on this. Uh, there's a nice table in the back, which I'm sure to uh, people who know how to math, this is very interesting. Um, but here, sort of engraved in the wood, I don't know if you can see this, this is Bill Davis, 1922, or 22, I'm assuming 1922. And then, I think Bill either passed this on or sold it, but it ended up in the care of R.B. Hanny. Now, R.B. Hanny, not to dox uh, the late Mr. Hanny, but uh, the name Hanny is on a lot of these tools. Um, he, he definitely took the time to mark some of them as his, and uh, I'm assuming that this collection was originally... Uh, in the possession of Mr. Hanny, um, rest his soul. Now, here, another handmade leather case. 
And Mr. Henny has put his mark on it. R.B. Henny. R. Henny. B. And then here, oh, hold on, there's one little, that's the other piece to the, there we are. So here, we have R.B. Henny. Let's see if I can read that. That says, it says C-O-L-O, -O, like Colo, Colo Aggies, 1928, R.B.H. 28. So Mr. Henney made this case, I assume, uh, I assume, in 1920. It's a very nice little case. He did a great job. Uh, I'm not sure how he sewed that seam, but I just recently learned how to do a saddle stitch, and I can guarantee you that mine was not nearly as pretty as that. That's beautiful. Good job, Mr. Henney. Um, all right, so I'm going to move on to... I'm going to try to move quickly through these, but there are some there's some really stunning pieces here I need to take the time and show you. Now this guy, we've got you know, two, two angle gauges here. You can't feel it because you're watching this. You're not here. You're not actually in the room with me. These aren't your hands. So, But I'm going to tell you, this one has a fair amount more heft on it than this one. This is very much like any of the angle marking gauges that you can go and buy today. I wouldn't say that this is a completely modern piece. It's probably 50 or 60 years old, but it's closer to a modern piece than this one. This guy, well, he's just a beauty. Um, right here we have on the back, we have an H curved in it. I'm assuming that's from Mr. Henney. Uh, and then the letters T-O-S. There's brass here, 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 here. Um, what's really fascinating about this, oh, here we go. Uh, I'm sorry, TOS again. I'm sure, again, one of you big brain people will be able to, sorry, my, my phone, or uh, not my phone, this camera, it decides to stop recording after eight minutes. So I have to be careful. It's also a, a good reminder that I'm just running on at the mouth here. Oh Jesus! So this is a TOS again. One of you, one of the big brains out there can tell me what manufacturer this is. But, it, but this is really nice. On the back, there's a there's a little dotted cross pattern here, and that could just be a worn mistake somehow. But it's 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 quaint. Um, up here at the top, I saw where did I see it? I lost it. Oh, there it is. Oh, great. Here we go. That's it. There's a date stamped on here. 1877. All right, have you a little bit different angle here. Now, I, I want to bring your attention, uh, before we talk about the marking gauges, I, I want to bring your attention to these squares. Now, we've all seen these uh, in stores and in various conditions as well. Um, I, I've seen these... I think most of us have seen these in conditions where we can't really call it a square anymore. Uh, <laughs> but this, let me tell you, this guy, he is square. Beautiful work. Nice brass inlay. Very nicely done. Um, this is stamped, as many of the tools are stamped, P. Schooler. And as far as I can tell, and I'm sure that uh, some of you will correct me on this if I'm wrong, um, P. Schooler, here it is again, is the I believe that it is it's the, not the name of a manufacturer rather it's it's the woodcraft of its time it's the it's the Pennsylvania tool distributor uh, so they would buy these tools assumably from Albany New York uh, or wherever they were manufactured uh, and then resell them to Pennsylvania's uh, uh, German community um, here is also another name it says P B Fraley. So I'm not really sure if that's the original maker, but P. Schooler 
is most definitely the company that sold it. Have another, a small, same general condition. This, the inlays on this are a little bit different. It's got diamonds, brass diamonds there. I really, I think I really should, I'm really, I think I'm just, I think I just don't know about light. I think the light needs to be behind me. I think that's the problem. We'll see if I can fix that. Um, yeah, anyway, nice diamond inlay. And again, square. Very nice. After all these years. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to guess, I'm taking a wild guess, mid-19th century for both of those. This is definitely a 20th century square. This is a Stanley. Um, I'm going to clean this up. It's going to be nice. Uh, metal square, pretty standard. We've all seen these. And again, pretty square. This is actually, I don't, you know, if we want to get picky about it, it's square, but it's not quite as square as those old wooden brass ones. Go figure. Now, not too much special about these. I mean, just at first glance, um, these are pretty common. We've seen these. I have several sets of these and other old toolboxes that I've purchased. Um, they're cool. Nice to have them. But this and this. Let's take a look at these two real quick. Let's see if I can get you in there closer. Hold on. There we go. There we go. Now you're looking, 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 looking here. Look here. Look, look. Would you look at this? Look. All right. Both of these are Stanleys. Um, let's go ahead and fold this out. This is this is very satisfying. So we fold this way and fold this way. Now you can see this is a 36 inch rule, and I don't know if you're looking here, but this is just this very easily. There's no, there's no pizzazz left in that. It just wants to sag down and fall. These are, let's see if I can get you honed in there. These are more modern printed numbers, right? Very standard. Now compare that. That's all loosey goosey. Compare that to this. And now this guy is something else. There is still a very old, very thick coat of shellac on that fella. Brass. And if you look, again, my camera is terrible and I am apologize and YouTube is more than willing or welcome to buy me a better camera. But that brass, that looks handmade. There is a tightness to this. You can't feel it, but you can see it. Look at that. There's a tightness to this. You open this up. I'm going to back you up here a little bit so you can see this. This opens here, and it's tight. Look, it stays. It's tight. Very, very lovely feel on this, on this metal work here. Now, take a look at this. You'll love this. Let's see if I can get you in close enough here. Come on with me. Come on. This, this is probably going to be really hard for you to see. It's it's hard to see in real life. I'll flip this around, see if I can get you a better version of this. Now look, these numbers and these ticks are hand-drawn meticulously. It's, again, almost impossible to see on camera, but you can even see where they've carried on their line right there in the brass and it's marked each one of these has a little tiny dot at the end of the line or the start of the line where the draftsman put his mark pulled it across and it's beautiful you can feel it you can feel the numbering on there this is an absolute beauty 
Um, again, this says Stanley. It's a Stanley number 68 ruler. And it is gorgeous. It Holding it, and I, I understand Stanley isn't this old, but holding it, this feels like an 18th century piece of tooling. Not a 19th century piece of tooling. But I mean that in the best way possible. It has... The only way I can describe it is that it has a Federalist feel to it. If that makes sense to anyone. But, there. It's absolutely gorgeous. And a pleasure. Alright, I'm going to make a spot here for the Merkin gauges so you can see it. Because there's a... There's, <laughs> again, very interesting examples. A whole array here. There's, this is almost a history lesson in the making of marking gauges. <laughs> I'll walk you through here one at a time. So, and I, I have, well, let's see, hang on, let's see, there's one more, that one doesn't, no, okay. There may be a, there's a few odds and ends, I, I have a couple of these and a couple of these. None of them fit together, so there's there's more, but I, I haven't pieced it all together yet. Oh, look here. <clears throat> so I'm going to start with what I think is the oldest uh, and kind of move through. It, it's really hard to say because oldest, newest, there's a subset of these that were most definitely shop made. These were made by the individual maker of his day. And then there are a couple of these that are most definitely not shop made. So we'll start with the shop made ones. This fella right here, he's loosey goosey. He has had an entire life of measuring. And you can see he typically lived right about there. Now I'm guessing that there was a wedge that went right in there. I may be lucky enough to find that wedge. Um, the piles of these tools, Anyway, yeah, so, uh, what, what, what's fascinating, and I don't know if you can see this, and, and, I'm, and I actually didn't notice this until now, but thinking that this was a shop-made piece, it is, again, stamped P. Schooler. So it could have been that a, a local maker, a Pennsylvania maker, made these, and then they were sold through P. Schooler. Um... And, and I could have this completely wrong. P. Schooler could have been the name of the original German Pennsylvanian that owned these tools. I, I don't know. I don't know. Again, may the big brains point me in the right direction. This is really this is a really great example. Now I, I spent some time living in Maryland, and um, I had a Sawyer there. He's a really great guy. Uh, I miss him dearly. We're now in a place that doesn't have nearly as many trees as Maryland did, and so there's not really great sawyers. Anyway, I'm, I'm rambling on. I want to say that that I, looking at this and feeling it and feeling the weight, this feels like Eastern Beach. This is uh, tapped and screwed, and most of the threads are in place. However, you can tell that this is missing its original wings. There were wings there. But that's tapped and screwed nicely. That still fits tightly. And there is a remarkable bit of wear on here. This is beautiful. You can see where that, over and over again, was put up against a piece of wood. Let's get our fancy veneer sheet back. You can see where it was put up against a piece of wood. Pulled across over and over and over again there. This is a well-used tool, and it is still in a condition that's usable. It is beautiful, and it feels beautiful. Not very remarkable, this is, but this is this is a primitive little piece. I like it. Again, stamped P. Schooler. This one is in not, not as good shape. We've got a we've got a, uh, a screw in there, but it's broken off. The head's long broken off. 
It's seized in place. This one will probably never see use again. We've actually got two pegs on this side, two pegs on this side, and two pegs on this side. Never seen one with an orientation quite like that, but it's very nice. This is clearly used for tenoning. I'm willing to bet that there's 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 a delightful uh, piece of uh, Amish or Shaker furniture that has a tenon that's exactly that wide and this was used over and over again to cut that tenon. You can see here, actually, yeah, you know what? Let's investigate that. We have a ruler right here. Uh, so that looks like that would be about an inch and a quarter tenon, and that would be about an inch and an eighth tenon. That would be a one inch tenon right there. So this is really great. This is this is exactly this is a, that's exactly what this is as I look at it. So there's a there's a there's a uh, German Pennsylvania cabinet maker that knew exactly what size his tenons always needed to be. That's fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. Good job, guys. Let's move on to the clearly manufactured ones. These are really great. Now this this guy, I should actually, I'm going to save this guy for last. Let's save him for last. He's he's pretty special. This one, quite fun. Hand drawn uh, markings for your measurements. I don't know if you can see that. Again, terrible camera. Thank you. Still have a nut with the wing or screw with the wing. All of the threads are intact. Very nice. But don't be fooled. Hipsters are not a new thing. That right there, my friends, is a joke as old as time. You can see why he would do this. Now, yeah, it's a mustache, and that's hilarious. But if you look here, this is the part that runs up against the wood. This is the part that you're going to be, you know, you're going to be squaring up. You're going to be running your line across there. And you can see the wear. There's wear all the way to here and here. It's almost perfect. Because the reason it angles up here and here is because usually when you pull that line, you end up tilting it there at the end. You pull it down and you tilt it towards you. You pull it straight and you tilt it towards you. And you see it there. You see it. That, that is lovely. Brass mustache, just enough to keep that wood from wearing away. The last thing you want to do is lose your flat right there. But you also don't want to waste an entire piece of brass to put it along there. It's great stuff. Really, really fantastic. Now this guy... He weighs, clearly, four times as much as any of these other guys. I mean, that this guy has some heft. This is probably about a, a pound. Uh, maybe even a kilogram. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, what's great is that this travels... I got to figure out how to get you guys a better view here but there's a mechanism here where we tighten here at the end and we can travel this we've got a brass screw here hang on I, I'm just I have it in my hand and I'm losing my words look at this look at how beautiful this is look I'm gonna take this out so you can see this this is completely unnecessary totally unnecessary for them to put that detail in there. Can you see that? They're, they're circles. They're beautifully engraved circles here and here and here. And that was completely unnecessary. They did not have to do that for us. Nice brass screw, everything intact. This whole piece is made out of rosewood. Um, and you can feel it in the heft. I mean, this is, this is rainforest right here. <laughs> So again, this one, um, and I've never seen a mechanism like this on one of these. This is this is just truly beautiful. It's beautiful. It's lost 
Uh, oh, no. No, I'm sorry. They're right there. So adjusting that mechanism will allow you to adjust the width of the tenon that you want to mark right there. Well, that's basically at its, at its zero point. And again, this is marked P schooler here and here. And there's a marking uh, that a lot of these others have. Albany, New York. This is actually, this is a little bit different. It says Brainerd Silver, New York, something. I don't know. Maybe one of the big brains can tell. All right. I, I, I recognize that I've wasted a lot of, of your time uh, so far. And we're going to get to the sharp stuff. Definitely. Very soon. Eventually. You have to understand the algorithm. It wants me uh, to lead you down a path towards the end of the video. So, of course, that's how I have to structure things. In the meantime, what we're going to do is we're going to do, we're going to, we're going to take a little diversion before we get to the sharp stuff. I want to cover a handful of oddities. There's more than a few in this box. I've already shown a couple, but uh, they're enough that it kind of warrants its own little segment. All right. I'm going to kind of walk through these one at a time. Uh, like I said, hopefully, um, because everyone on the internet is absolutely brilliant and they know everything, um, you guys can tell me what these are because I'm mostly at a loss, mostly. Oh, so what we have here, um, when I, when I saw this, I, I, I actually, I, I realize I haven't told the story of how I came across this horde. Um, and if this was a college composition class and I was giving you this report, um, I would, I would probably be in a lot of trouble for waiting until the halfway point to really open up and tell you exactly how I came across this. And it, it was completely at random. Um, so I, I, the long and the short of it is that I, you know, I do a, a lot of um, just sort of randomly perusing local antique stores on a semi-regular basis. Whenever I get a, a little bit of a kitchen pass, I get out of the house. Of course, things, you know, in our current dystopia are not exactly easy to come up with viable reasons to leave the house. Um, but this is one of them that's, that I find is, is, is fairly benign. You go out and you walk through a mostly empty antique store and you look for tools. So I was doing just that uh, last week. And uh, last week, uh, according to where I am uh, on the, uh, the... Yeah, anyway. So, um, and I, I was walking through the antique store and there's a woman uh, sitting in her booth. And she says, uh, she says, hey, you know, I'm here in the booth. Come on over. Uh, I'm giving deals away. And I ask her, I said, uh, you know, what's going on? Um, nice to meet you. She says, well, what, you know, what kind of things are you looking for? And I said, I'm a tool guy. I look for tools and uh, just try to find some things. And um, she pointed me in the direction. She had a few, like a little box of um, uh, old Model T Ford tools and there were a couple of interesting wrenches in there but nothing to speak of and um you know i was kind of giving her a rundown i was sort of uh talking to her about uh uh you know the sorts of things that um you know are popular because of on the you know online communities like this uh, uh you know i know that you know people like eric uh from hand tool rescue have really popularized the perfect handle screwdriver and the the 1879 wrenches. People, people are out there looking for those, and I figured I'd do her a solid and just say, "Hey, you know, these are the kinds of things that people want." So she looks at me. She looks at me, and she she says, "Well, what? You're not interested in, in some old German tools, are you?" Well, you can see where things went from there. Uh, essentially, she had uh, she had knowledge of this hoard. And she led me to it, bless her soul. And uh, we made a 
a very comfortable deal for all of us and here we are. All that to say, this is one of the first things I saw in the picture. When I saw this, I immediately thought, ah, this, this is an auger bit holder. No, no, no. This. Now, I'll bring you in a little closer here so you can take a look. I don't know a lot about leather working, and I, I know basically zero uh, about machining, but to me these look like punches. These look probably, I would have, I'm imagining that they're leather punches. Uh, we've got different shaped tops. Uh, let's see, this says, made in USA by Mayhew. Now probably if I had done a little bit of Googling before I actually sat down to make this video, uh, I would already know what these are, what they're used for, and who made them, but what's the, what's the fun in living ignorance free? No, this is, I don't know what this is. I need you. I need you to tell me. Okay. I promise you, I promise, stick with me here. We're going somewhere awesome. Or just just, just move on past this part, and the, sh the sharp stuff is over there. It's, it's, it's up ahead. But this is sharp. Or it was sharp. Now, my best guess for what this is, is uh, this is clearly uh, how Sasquatch took care of his beard. I mean... Um, let's see, I don't, I don't have a banana for scale. Either way, I think you can tell. This is a fairly large, it's a fairly large hunk of metal. Um, it also appears to be hand forged. Uh, this is, this is, somebody made this tool for their shop specifically, um, you can see the forging marks on here. It's really something. I, I'm, I don't see a weld anywhere, so I'm going to guess that this whole thing is tool steel or uh, maybe wrought iron. I, I, I don't know. I'm not a metal guy. Metal guys, do, do your stuff. Tell me what this is. I don't know. I'm, I intend to sharpen it up. I think all these bits of metal need to be sharp, but um, my best guess on this one is this is probably some sort of shingle maker. Uh, I could be wrong about that. Uh, could be a sort of a shim maker, but I, I think that just looking at it, you know, this has been beat to hell, this edge. So this is definitely some sort of large paring tool that goes through, beat it in with a mallet. It's very cool though. This may not even have a name. This may just be a custom tool that this woodworker or one of these woodworkers created. This is a lot of fun. I, the best that I can figure is that this is this is an original air tool. <laughs> uh, dusty bench. Oh, it has a nice antique smell to the inside there. There's a lot of corrosion around the edge, uh, the tip there, I should say. And um, it, this is brass. Uh, it appears to be brazed on. That could also just be gunk. But I'm assuming that this is a raised edge there. Uh, also, again, here, very interesting. It also looks to be raised. I doubt that's an actual weld. My gut tells me that there's more to this, or there was more to this. Uh, maybe not. Still very cool. Brass here, brass here, brass here. Aluminum, 
No, probably not aluminum. I think what aluminum is a 20th century metal, right? Maybe? Uh, well, yes. Uh, iron, steel. There's no rust on it. Uh, there's not even a lot of corrosion. Except for here. This is very dirty, which again leads me to believe that this wasn't the end of this, that there was something else that went here. But I, I can't tell you what, I'm not sure. Now this is a lot of fun. Now I actually know what this claims to be. <clears throat> uh, I actually I put this online the other night and uh, tagged uh, a certain hand tool guy that uh, probably knows about these, but you know whatever. It's uh, I got weird and took it down because I'm I'm weird. So that's the way that is. The uh, we've got a clamp here for your bench top. We have a grinding wheel and another grinding wheel. And right here, very clearly, says uh, patent applied, quick edge sharpener, Chicago, Illinois. Patent applied. And you can see that we spent. And we sharpen. It needs a little bit of oil. It also helps if I turn it the right way. So that's an interesting little mechanism. I, uh, I'm i not sure what this was meant to sharpen. Um, you can see here that there's a guide here and a guide here. And it seems like a blade would fit right down in there. So. You know, I, I would assume that you drop maybe a knife in there. I wouldn't imagine it would be a chisel, but you drop a knife or something down in there and then turn the handle. And of course, you're not holding this up at that point. It's attached to your bench, so you've got a hand on your work and then a hand to crank here. I, I think it's pretty clear that there's a reason why this uh, wasn't popularized as it is. Who knows? There may be an entire history to this that I am unaware of. Hopefully, the big brains out there, um, I, really, I, should, I should probably stop saying that. That's pretty cringe, right? Hopefully, you guys will uh, you'll be able to figure it out. I mean, it's a lever, right? It's a lever. I mean that's it. It's not even it's not even very thin here. You can you don't have a uh, a fork. Uh, could be that the fork is missing. That it used to be there. That this was for pulling out a brad, but it's a mystery. Uh, yeah, Terminator's shoehorn. I I don't know. There it is. You tell me. Now, this is this is really cool. <laughs> I showed you earlier. There were a, uh, lots of pieces of uh, of iron, uh, different cold chisels. Uh, this it's either copper that has not corroded uh, even a little bit over time, or it's brass. Um, I'm, I'm guessing it looks like copper. It is the color of a penny. Um, maybe that's old zinc. I, I don't know. I obviously some it's soft. I did not do this to it. Uh, this damage was there when I came across it in the box, but you know, I don't know multiple. I have multiple questions about this. I mean, what? What do you use a cold chisel like this for? Um, I'm assuming that if you're building a house and most of what's here, uh, you could you could build a, an old Pennsylvania house or a barn with what, with what I've got out of this hoard. Um, yeah, I don't know. 
Is it a tool for making other tools? Who knows? Uh, it's propaganda time. Now, <clears throat> so before we were interrupted with uh, patriotism, yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I don't have a hardness measuring tool. I, I can just tell you that the color here, this looks copper. Um, you know, I'm not a metallurgist. I'm not even a metal guy. Very, very interesting though. This is, it's beautiful. It has a, it's one of those things that it just, it has a certain chi. If that makes any sense, je ne sais quoi. You know. There you go. All right, one last little oddity here. Um, I'm sure it's not the last one amongst everything, but it's the last one I've gathered up here. Now, I actually know what this tool is. It's a it's a marking tool. It's like a like a leather marking tool, right? But is it for leather? I don't know. Look at this guy. You tell me. It's got a beautiful handle on it. It's beautifully machined. It needs a little bit of touch up just to just to make it shine a little bit no need to do anything crazy with it we're not sandblasting anything but it's a nice nice tool it fits well in the hand it's got that nice little curve to it yeah um i guess we've all seen these in our play-doh sets but you know this is particularly interesting I, again i don't know if this was meant for leather i assume it was these teeth are, they're not, they're not sharp. This, gosh, this camera really sucks. I'm sorry, guys. There you go. Oddities. And now, the moment you've been waiting for! <laughs> yeah, all right. <clears throat> yeah, here we are. We've... We're, we've come, <laughs> we've made it to the sharp stuff. <laughs> I, I hope that you're as excited as I am. And I know I teased you with the sharp stuff in the beginning. I did that on purpose. You remember I told you I was going to do that. I was going to give you some sharp stuff in the beginning. <sighs> but now, now we've come, we've come to the, here, I'll just, I'll, I'll cut, you'll cut, we'll do cut, 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 cut. So let's do this sort of kind of in the order that you would use to build a house. Uh, <sighs> I got to tell you, there's been a lot of proud moments in my life. I have two kids. I have uh, an incredible wife. Uh, should all be really jealous at how awesome and incredible my wife and kids are because they're really sweet and I think that they're fantastic and I don't intend to sell them anytime soon. Same goes with the slick. <laughs> this, this is three inches wide. This is 28 inches long stem to stern. Uh, I think that gives us, yeah, let's throw a tape on there. That is 15 inches of iron right there. I, um, the moment that I pulled this out of the box and I saw that this was there, I, uh, I, 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 I genuinely wept a little bit. I may have shed more than one tear. I, this is just not the sort of thing that you find laying around on the internet. This is not the sort of thing you find ever. <laughs> this is the kind of thing that, um, you know, if you have a trust fund and you know a blacksmith, you know, it's the sort of thing that can be worked out. But, uh, you know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's just rare to me. Maybe, maybe you guys, maybe some of you guys have got friggin' swimming pools filled with these. 
I've never seen anything like this before. <laughs> it's heavy. I'm going to wager um, several pounds. <laughs> At some point, and I'm and I'm really I'm dying to do this. I it, it'll be an entire video in and of itself. But I, I just uh, I just want to I, I want to get it sharp, and uh, I think it it deserves to cut some wood. This has the kind of chi that you would expect to to feel uh, from a Japanese katana. This is now the most prized possession in my collection and I'm just gonna keep talking about it because I'm proud of it uh, it doesn't even have to go to college to impress me <laughs> it's a beautiful taper here it's just a beautiful taper you can see the bevel is intact the back is flat it's flat it's smooth and this has got to be more than 120 years old, and there's, there's, this metal is in amazing condition for its age. I'm assuming this handle is a quarter sawn oak, maybe. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell. It's heavy. It's old growth. Tight rings. And it was in the box. This is what I found first when I opened the box. I should have filmed it. This is what I found first. I found this and I said, my God, Magnum. Couple of nice uh, number eights here. Are these uh, these draw knives, uh, these are great. One with a fixed handle. Uh, this one needs a, needs a little love. He's a little loose. Uh, it's a great piece of steel in here, though. This guy is in fantastic shape. Uh, I'm not really sure of the age of this guy. I've seen, you know, you run into these these all over the place. Um, this is marked Pexto, made in the USA. Pexto. So I'm guessing this is a 20th century tool right there. Uh, it's nice. It's a nice tool. That fella right there. Oh, that's a good 30, 40 pounds. Maybe even 50. I mean, again, stamped P. Schooler. Now you'll see that there's a bevel on that side, and there's a flat on that side, and that right there. It's, it's one of the most amazing little broad axes I've ever seen. You know, I think usually when we encounter these, uh, or at least we, I, encounter these, uh, which isn't often, this piece right here has a bit of a curve to it, but you can see that the blacksmith that made this, they put that there. I, I think it's kind of brilliant. It, it's almost, uh, you know, it's not a, it's not a dovetail, but it clearly the blacksmith w w was thinking it through. They were saying to themselves that this, you know, this makes a stronger uh, bond between wood and, and metal. This is going to take more abuse, and you can see it. You can see that that edge is just curved in a little bit where it has rubbed against that. But I, I got to tell you, this is still it's a little loose. But that guy is in there. Now somebody, at some point, you know, I don't know if you can see that. This guy's heavy. Somebody shoved a piece of steel in there. And that may have been at its inception. Uh, but either way, there's a hunk of steel. And I think, and I'm just going to wager to guess, that this is original. That all of this is original. And I frankly don't want to disturb that. I want to clean this up. Uh, I want to sharpen that blade. Um, and I think I'm going to leave it just as it is. I. It's a remarkable, remarkable specimen.
Now, when I opened the, the toolbox originally, these guys were hidden deep down in the bottom. Uh, they were underneath the distons. I didn't even see them at first. Um, I've seen some big joiner planes. I've, I've owned some big joiner planes. Uh, these are beyond anything I've encountered. As this one in particular, I, I've seen some this big. Uh, I've even maybe seen one or two like this, but this is, this one's beyond. Twenty-six inches by three and a quarter for that big one. All of these are stamped P Schooler, which again is either the company that sold it or the original guy that owned them. Uh, and I'm going to say this: that if that is the original owner. Uh, this P schooler fella. There are so many things that you are about to see uh, that are also stamped with his name, and I. It makes me. Uh, if it's not a tool dealer, if it isn't an actual person, it it's gonna make me a little bit more sentimental towards these. Not that I'm not already sentimental. So there's a little bit of rot down here on this one, which is unfortunate. These handles are solid. This is a solid handle. This is a solid handle. Um, there's some damage here. Uh, the shoe's cracked here. The bottom has seen days. I, I don't expect that these will ever be in use again, but I am definitely going to clean them up. Their irons are here, and they're massive. Uh, there may be writing on these irons, but I can't tell at the moment. It's a brass fitting on the back, which is nice. This has a bit of a scoop to it, if you can see there. And it's unclear which of these uh, this iron belonged to, or this iron, or this iron. Uh, this says, let's see. Warranted cast steel. I can't read the maker's name. Yeah, so it's 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 unclear which belongs with which. Uh, we have three irons. I think that this is this may actually go to something else. These were in the throat here, and that's the same. That's stamped with the same maker as the others. I'm going to clean these up. These are going to be beautiful at some point. We'll do a video on those. Whew. Yeah. So I, I debated uh, putting this one on the table at this time anyway. Um, we'll, get, we'll get to him in a minute. I'm, I'm going to move him over. We'll get to him in a minute. The reason he's here uh, is because he's he, he, he's got friends over there, you'll see in a minute. But it just seemed appropriate to put him here with this group instead of grouping him with the next group of obscenely amazing planes. Start at the back here. That is a Stanley number 5. Uh, it is in great shape, aside from being a little dirty. Uh, the bottom is smooth and undamaged. Uh, the handle needs a little love. There's a little love. We know how these handles go. I think we've all restored enough of these. Yeah, we know how this goes. Um, the action is... It's tight. It's not, it's not movable. So basically what this needs is a good cleaning. And that is a, a beautiful... Beautiful little jack plane. Here, uh, now this is not a Stanley, um, I think. Hang on, let's see, wait, one of these was. Yeah, no, this is not a Stanley. This is a Fulton number 3710. Now, if I'm not mistaken, uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is another 
uh, Iowa, or uh, not Iowa, Ohio original. Um, it, I don't, I, I can't tell you how old this is. I mean, I'm sure that I, mean, I could tell you if I actually put the effort into going on the internet right now and looking it up, I could tell you exactly how old this is, but I'm going to, I'm going to let you do that for me because you guys are awesome. Um, this, uh, Again, it has a loose handle. We know how this goes. But that's a really nicely machined handle. It just has a really nice little feel to it. It has a whoosh feel. The metal on this is nice. It has this sort of this blue effect. I don't know if you can see that. And there's a... a th this is to be appreciated. I don't know. If you, there's a... The grain in this metal has just a particular wave to it. And I don't know if that's going to come through on camera, but it's there. There's a very nice wave to that grain. It's really pretty. It's a very pretty little plane. I, uh, I think that this is... Um, that's uh, probably the same size uh, as like a Stanley number three. Hang on, I think I have a four over here. Let's see. Oh, I know I have a four over here. So this, this is my standard number four. This is the number four that I use uh, regularly. And uh, yeah, that's about, you could tell, they're, they're competing with a number four there. This is my number five and a half. Uh, this is not from the Horde. These are my, my own personal tools. But uh, five and a half, you can kind of see the old, this is an old five, five and a half. And then this is the Fulton 4, and then the Stanley 4. So, I'll take this out. Uh, here, you have a... Uh, this, one's, this one's in kind of rough condition. Um, it is a an old true value plane. And I, you know, it's, just, it's got that inner working. I think that we can call this a POS. This is a, this is a mid-century... POS, um, but it, it's cool. I mean, you know, one man's POS is a, is another man's, uh, yeah, yeah I'm not kink shaming here. We're not, no one, no one's kink shaming. So, um, really great. <laughs> Very excited when I came across this. I want you to notice just how thin that guy is. I don't know how many of you have seen a, a Stanley number 40 in the wild. I had never seen one. Um, and I'd actually recently had just uh, uh, been looking for a plane to turn into a scrub plane. Uh, I was jealous of all of the other scrub planes out there and the fact that I didn't own one. Uh, but this right here is a Stanley number 40 scrub plane. And look at that. That is beautiful. That is a much better shape than I would have gotten had I tried to do that. Very thin blade. Let's see. We've got about a inch and a quarter on that guy. Yeah, inch and a quarter wide. Black. Black handle. Black handle. There's not much I need to do to this to make this right. Um... It's beautiful. It's in beautiful shape. A little dirty, needs a little oil, but just, just gorgeous. Um, there's a uh, a mark on the side. I can kind of make out L K G K. I'm not sure. Either way, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful plane. I can't wait to clean this up and use it. And then we have an old smoothing plane. Now, I, I tell you, I've come across a few of these in the wild, and uh, actually I'll, I'll pull one out from my collection before this. Ohio uh, smoothing plane just like this one it's a little bit thinner uh, they're almost identical this is uh, 
this is one that I've had uh, for a number of years. The iron in it is great, but as you can see, the thing that happens with these guys, uh, the shoe is cracked and somebody has put a nail through there. Now again, this is not from the hoard. This is from the hoard. And this is in absolutely immaculate condition. I feel like a lot of this video has been saying the names of other people on YouTube, but I, you know, it's a community for a reason. People coalesce around uh, shared interest, right? So when I see things like this, I immediately think of Stravos Gracchus. Uh, apologize if I'm not pronouncing your name right. Um, this is this is something, you know, beyond my capability to make. Um, the actual name of this plane is is infuriatingly uh, lost from my mind right now, but I I, I just want to point out here. This is you know this is all quarter sawn material. I'm assuming quarter sawn oak with the holly insert right here. And you're going to see this a lot on the tools that I'm going to show you going forward. Um, all of them have this holly insert. Uh, you've got a scribe that follows your line here. Um, and then an adjustable sole so that you can get right up uh, on that edge and, and cut your rabbit. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna yeah, I'm just yeah, rabbiting plane. There you go. So uh, a P schooler again. The 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 majority of the planes going forward, they all have this, you know, this sort of moldy nature to the end of them. I I will definitely clean this with a a very delicate astringent. Um, Hard to know what to say about these. Um, you know, I assume that most people's experience is fairly similar to mine. <clears throat> we're, we're in, you go to an antique store, and you've you've got a, a dealer that <clears throat> that means well, but they've mostly got a bunch of junk that's fallen apart, missing half of what's supposed to be there, uh, got big chunks broken. And, you know, you look at it and you think, man, that used to be a nice tool, but no more. But you never find them like this. The only thing wrong that I can see with this plow plane is that there are just four little busted threads. The rest of this is just in immaculate shape all of its original parts the iron is beautiful the handle is solid and again this is stamped P schooler and it also has the maker stamp on it uh, which is Union Factory uh, Union Factory warranted H. Chapin. There's been a few other tools in here stamped H. Chapin as well. So we've got this plow plane. We've got this plow plane. Brass. Peace cooler. Uh, this is uh, manufactured in Albany. <clears throat> These are tools that I've I've seen replicas made. I've seen Stravos make things like this. I've seen these listed online occasionally. I've seen them in the backgrounds of uh, many videos on online. It's it uh, to actually see it and to actually hold it. It's just incredible. They're incredible and they're used. They're used appropriately. They're in great shape. This iron is sharp. This is sharp. It's beautiful. 
just gushing over these. And this is really incredible. I've never actually seen anything like this. So <clears throat> uh, I think that this is a, sh a sash plane. So I think this is made for window sashes. I'm just assuming here. Um, but again, stampede schooler. But the, the, the funny thing about this, you know, clearly it's two irons. There's a profile here, right? But this is two planes. And they're just... They're just nicely packaged together here. Now, some of you may be cool enough to have encountered something like this before. I, I'm neither cool enough nor fortunate enough for that to have happened. I get the feeling these haven't been taken apart in a long time, but you see. There you go. That fellow's sliding out. There's two planes there. So they can be used individually or in tandem. And look at that. You, you can see the wear where it's been spun. Spun, 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 spun. Same here. And this, this took a bit of figuring. I, I was really unsure about this. So, when I first found it in the box, um, and this is one of the bits and pieces that just never seems to make it in collections, at least as far as I can tell. Again, Peace Schooler, and they're numbered. And they're stepped. So I looked at it and I said, "Well, I don't even, I don't even know." Um, throughout the huge collection of iron that's uh, scattered about, there are these guys, and uh, it seems, it just seems right. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this, maybe the, I'm totally wrong about this, but this seems to be the way. It's clearly not in the right order, but you get the picture. I think that these irons stack in, and a lot of these irons are interchangeable with these different plows. It's really something. Look, this is a stupid kind of luck. And I, I don't even know, I don't even know how I fell into this. Uh, I mean, really. <laughs> so this is what's called an even set. This is an even set of, of, um, of hollows and, uh, rounds. <laughs> now I know that if, to have like a technically a full set, you need a you need evens and odds. Um, that's not what this is. This is this is an even set, but an even set will do everything that you need them to do to do moldings. Um, I've never, aside from I have a couple of these that I've picked up over the years uh, in antique stores. Um, paid too much money for them, and they were just a one off, as I'm sure many of us have encountered. You find a nice, uh, you know, a nice beater, a nice cove, and you're like, yeah, I'll use that. I'll take it. I'll put it in the shop, and maybe it's in good shape. Maybe it isn't, but it's not a set. I've never, you know, aside from, again, the walls of people's shops on YouTube channels, I've never seen a full set like this. Um, so, you can see here, th these are all in perfect shape. I mean, just remarkable. They're used. They're very clearly used. Quarter saw and white oak. 
They're all stamped P schooler. They're made. Uh, they're made by the um, uh, the Benson uh, the Benson Crenet uh, Company in Albany. Every every single iron is present. Every wedge is intact. It's perfect. They're perfect. And they need a little cleaning. The irons are sharp on these. This guy got a little bit of iron damage. Not a big deal. It's uh, it's essentially superficial. They're perfect. <laughs> and I'm just amazed. The uh, there you go. I'm gonna leave it to me to drop it on the floor. Now th these are special profiles. There's a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of these. And these are uh, labeled with a half, uh, with a, a fractional number. Um, I don't know much about these, and I, I don't want to say the wrong things, but I will say that uh, they're, they're, they're fractionalized. These are in great shape. Um, they're beautiful. All of these, every single one of these, has the holly insert right there. And it runs all the way through. And it's smooth as glass. It's just beautiful. Now I think that of all the things that I may be missing, uh, I'm missing the partners to these. Now what we have here, see we've got the, and then the same here. So we're missing the other sides. There should be a mirror version of this one and a mirror version of this one, and I don't have them. They're not in this set, uh, and they're not in this hoard. But you'll hear no complaints from me. <clears throat> All right, <clears throat> everyone, thank you, uh, thank you for sticking with me through this. I know this is uh, this has been awkward for both of us. Uh, I'm, I, uh, I can tell you though, the, the most awkward thing is going to be editing this. This is going to be, this is going to be painful to edit. I'm going to have to make sure that, uh, that I have a, 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 a stiff drink or something. All right. So <laughs> this is clearly, you know, the most used portion of these tools. Um, you know, and in fact, I think, I just thought, I just thought about this, I think I know where that is. Uh, anyway, all right. <clears throat> so, there is a story here. There is a story here, and the story, the way that I interpret it, and the way that I can, I can guess it to roll, is that, uh, these tools right here, these tools came in the personal possession uh, of a very brave immigrant. Um, I imagine that these s came across the ocean on a sailing vessel, maybe a steam vessel, and they got to the United States, and they were probably somebody's way of life and at some point that somebody made it to pennsylvania found a nice home and started building it and other tools and that, that might be uh stretching it but when you really start to look at what's here now, all of these, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a mark on these. There is a, uh, on each one, uh, I believe that's a triangle at the top, an arrow, uh, like, a, like an arrow that you would fashion to fire from a bow, and then the German cross right here at the bottom. And it's on every one of these. It's on this one, it's on this one, and this one, and this one, all the way through here. 
and as a woodworker, I can, I, you know, I have a, a modest chisel set. It, it's not an expensive set. In fact, you know, most of the work that I do is with a Harbor Freight set that I paid $10 for 15 years ago. But with these irons and a couple of additional modest shapes, a gouge, again, stamped the same way, scraper, another gouge, scraping tool, and a scraping tool. I mean, you can make an, 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 an almost anything. <laughs> if you're clever enough and these are sharp enough now these have been through so much use and so much wear uh it i don't know if things like this are a result of abuse it doesn't seem so i think that at some point in its life you know it was worked down to this this has clearly been worked down for some reason. It's possible that at some point the tang broke and uh, he just sort of made the decision, well, you know, it's still a useful tool to me as something else. So he can lay it out, take a whack, you know, cut mortises. Who knows? I don't know. It's incredible, though. These need a good cleaning, and I intend to sharpen these. Again, I don't know what kind of steel this is. Uh, there's probably somebody that knows a lot more about German steel. But there's definitely a blue effect happening here as I see it. And it's not just this. There's a, a blue, black, something happening there. And you can see the color in the bevel. And there's really not much rust to speak of. Now these, uh, these are these are American. You know, these are made in Pennsylvania, as far as I can tell. Uh, this guy is marked uh, Diamond Edge, stamped Diamond Edge. This may even be 20th century. I I don't know, but it's massive. A beautiful slick. It's stamped T.H. Witherby. Warranted. It's gorgeous. And it has that same beautiful taper. It's an ele a really elegant taper that's on this one. Very flat side. Really nice. This is going to be beautiful when it's cleaned up and sharpened. Never come across anything like this. I've never, never seen anything. Beautiful corner, corner chisel. It must be a real pain in the ass to sharpen. This has got some deep pitting in it. You know, I imagine that this is the sort of tool. This wasn't, this wasn't meant to be, a, you know, a, a pretty tool or an accurate tool. It was meant to set in and I don't know beautiful. I'd love to see the mortises that thing squared out. <laughs> they sort of speak for themselves. These are, these are 20th century Stanleys. Um, this one's fairly common. I've got a, a number of these that I've run across over the years. This is interesting with the perfect handle. I've never Never seen any quite like this. This one's missing its handle. I believe it's still in the stash somewhere. Now, I've said a lot. I've shown a lot. Uh, while I have you here, before you go away, I'm going to show you that as well. That nice mallet. Beautiful tapered handle. Now look, there's more. Uh, I could probably make three more piles of just various randomness. Um, there's an old Diston uh, level over there. 
There's a couple of clamps. There's uh, any number of strange hammers and pins. Um, but I, I think that for the purposes of this video, this, this, <laughs> this is more than enough. You've probably been listening to me babble for, for too long now, and I'd, I feel embarrassed for myself and, and, for, and for all of you. God help you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> this can't be easy. This is why I'd normally make videos where I don't say a word. This, 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 is, this, is, deep, this is deeply cringy. This is deeply, this is deeply something. Again, I apologize for the quality of the cinematography. I'm I'm still trying to figure all that stuff out, and I uh, I uh, I hope the sound comes through okay. I'm I'm literally talking at a camera that just has a built-in microphone that's ten years old. So, but there it is, guys. There it is. I'll never, I'll never run into something like this again. I, I would be shocked if it happens. Uh, I already had a very well outfitted shop, but there's a handful of tools here that I never expected to actually own in my life, and uh, I'm gonna treat them well. So, thanks for your time. I really appreciate you. Uh, you know, be really awesome if you. If you do the whole the whole subscribe and whatnot, that's that's that generally pleases the algorithms. So thanks. Have a good one. Holy Buster Keaton, I, I almost forgot the most important thing. Oh I'm gonna take you out of here and walk you around here for a second. Just bear with me. This is gonna get a little bumpy. So if we come through here. This is the actual toolbox. All this paper piled up over here is, is from the boxes that uh, came with this. This came packed with the saws and the giant planes. It's in remarkable condition. I, I mean, you can see its age. It's here, but this is solid. This isn't loose. There's this blue paint, this original blue paint that is just Remarkable. I, I have no intention of, of removing that or damaging that. On the inside, uh, I've, I'm sure I've cut to a few tool placements in here just for funsies, but you can see it opens up. And as best I can tell, the inside portions are poplar, but these pieces, the show pieces, the face pieces, are all rosewood. There's some sort of mahogany. And this does exactly what you think it does. Now, this is all very precarious, and it needs some love. And I intend to give it a very light going over, just to make sure that all of the joints are secure, that everything's intact, and that everything is clean, and not on the verge of collapsing. But beyond that, I'm, I'm not doing anything deep. <laughs> but it goes all the way down. There are turtles all the way down. There's a cavity behind here as well. I'm not going to pull it all out in this video. There'll be more on this. But I thought you should see. Take care.